Hello everyone, and I've been making videos for a few years now, so just like Pokemon, my interests and concerns have also evolved. But one aspect of the series that has always been intriguing to me is evolution itself, specifically why certain species don't evolve or have a pre-evolution. Today we'll be pondering the reasons that explain all Pokemon without an evolutionary line, whether biological, environmental, or conceptual, what makes them not evolve. Well, with many Game Freak was probably just being a slowpoke, but let's have some fun anyway. Farfetch'd is a species on the verge of extinction for obvious reasons, and that may seem somewhat contradictory. That evolutionary pressure should precisely encourage evolution. But that's the point. The whole concept behind this Pokemon is a goofy, silly creature that wouldn't do it even if its life was in danger and evolution forced it to change. It's the only instance on the roster that doesn't evolve for reasons more conceptual to the Pokemon itself than biological, if we don't consider its Galarian form, of course. Kangaskhan is quite powerful and her characteristics make her perfect for the main goal, protecting its offspring. However, it's a Pokemon with not much logic on its own, so let's not read too much into it. Pinsir is also extremely strong for a bug-type Pokemon, being the dominant predator in its ecosystem, even outside Kanto, when it had to compete against competitors such as Heracross or Vikabolt, its power remained in balance and didn't force it to evolve for the time being. Tauros is also quite interesting. Although it's common for packs of Houndoom to threaten their offspring, once adult, with their great power, social nature, and ability to adapt to different terrains, Tauros have no natural enemies, so they would not need to evolve, nor is their species in near danger of extinction. Let's hope the last DLC of Poke Spain doesn't change things. Lapras was also on the verge of extinction at some point in history. Their gentle heart and peaceful nature would put them in danger from poachers. However, at some point it developed the ability to read the minds of people, allowing only pure people of good intentions to see it, helping them and enjoying ferrying them on its back. That's why, although it doesn't evolve as such, it's a species that has experienced many changes, leading it to be able to survive perfectly nowadays. Ditto can rearrange its cell structure and transform itself into any Pokemon or even object close to it. Besides the fact that with these abilities it could easily escape from any potential predator, there is no clear evidence that such a strange being is even in the food chain, nor that its DNA could evolve or that it has any need to evolve at all. Aerodactyl was the undisputed disputed king of the skies in ancient times before a mysterious event wiped out most of the life of that era. There was no reason for it to evolve. Usually, unown live in their own reality and are not exposed to other Pokemon and common people. Besides, they always work in groups and together they are almost invincible. They are completely independent from concepts such as evolution and maybe even beyond that. Quillfish, like its real-life counterpart, is a delicacy but extremely toxic which would not make it the favorite target of the sea kings who would rather base their diet on less dangerous species. Then why can its Hisuian form evolve when it's even more poisonous? Why are you asking me? Check it with God. Shuckle has the best defense in the world with its hard shell, inside of which it can survive for a very long time with the berries it has previously stored. It's very safe inside it. Heracross has an incredible strength that allows it to throw objects over a hundred times its weight with little effort. It can fly short distances at high speed, and it's a great fighter, as well as being very friendly, unlike Pinsir, so it doesn't make many enemies. It feeds on sipping honey, so it's very unusual for a Pokemon to try to attack it in the first place. Corsola is maybe one of the strangest instances of those Pokemon with no evolution. It's harmless and very nutritious, like a sweet candy, but Marini's introduction in Sun and Moon cleared up the confusion. It has a simple but efficient survival system. It sheds branches of its coral to feed its predator to escape. They can regenerate these branches in a single night and quickly reinforce them with nutrients from the seawater, so it's an almost perfect survival system. It was precisely the devastating bleaching of the corals of its Galarian form that caused them to no longer have these properties and begin to perish, giving origin to Cursula. Pretty clever, right? Delibird may be a very similar case. Instead of dropping off parts of its body, it would drop off some of the food it carries in its sack-like tail, satisfying its predator as it flies away. It's also a kind Pokemon that often shares its food with anyone hungry, whether human or Pokemon. So I wouldn't be surprised if there was some sort of agreement about not messing with it too much. You never know when one might help you. Skarmory has a hard protective armor, which means that even if someone managed to hunt it, they would most likely not be able to break it to feed on the bird inside. Additionally, its thin and sharp feathers can cause a lot of damage, and even if someone decides to attack it, it can fly away at a speed of over 180 miles per hour. What more do you need? Smeargle are quiet and peaceful, feeding on berries, and painting in remote and 
isolated places such as the ruins of Alf or the artisan cave without annoying anyone. But as they all lived together, if any intruder were to come in with bad intentions, it would be in serious danger from a group of Pokemon who would use its own attacks against it. Miltank are famous for their Moo Moo milk, highly nutritious as well as medicinal, and are raised all over the world on human protected farms. This Pokemon is rarely seen in the wild, but usually in places close to farms and ranches, so it hardly ever has to face other Pokemon in the wild. But if it should have to deal with a potential predator, it's also strong enough to do so with confidence. Sableye feeds on gemstones and rocks, which its particular organism metabolizes and converts into gems that emerge from its skin. So it doesn't have to compete with many other Pokemon for food, living quietly in dark caves and tunnels. It also has no weaknesses that make it vulnerable, except for fairy types, which don't tend to visit its habitat. Except for Mawile, but their diets are so different that they don't really have to fight, and they usually get along quite well. In this case, its docile-looking face serves to lull its foe into letting down its guard to make a surprise attack with its huge jaws. Plusel and Minin are actually the same species but with opposite poles. They always work together and their weak electric attacks turn devastating when combined. They depend on each other just as they are. It's really cute, although they are among the Pokemon that create the biggest amount of doubts in the video to be honest. Something quite similar happens with Volbeat and Illumisi. They live together in huge swarms and if a threat appears, they can use Sweet Scent together to confuse their opponents while they escape. Torkoal is not the most appealing prey. Its diet of charcoal makes it burn inside, and its shell is almost as hard as Shuckles. But when attacked, it can release a thick black smoke that allows it to flee, like a smoke ball, an item that was actually inspired by the survival skills of this Pokemon, so that weak trainers can run away from dangerous Pokemon. Spinda has adapted to live in areas covered with volcanic ash. This ash impairs vision and causes some intoxication under continuous exposure. If you add its signature shaky, tottering steps, it's a hypnotic dance that causes even more confusion. If a potential predator were to approach this route and try to ambush Spinda, it would end up falling into its trap and putting itself in a dangerous situation. Zangoose and Sea Viper are stronger than most fully evolved Pokemon, so they don't really need an evolution. However, both are deadly rivals to each other other, so there is some adaptation in them to deal with their opponents, such as Sea Viper's sword-like tail to counteract Zangoose's claws, or the latter immunity to poison to survive Sea Viper's attacks. Lunatone and Solrock are also quite strong and are believed to have fallen from space in a meteorite from another planet. Maybe that makes them somehow alien to the concept of evolution in this world, but in any case, floating stones with psychic powers don't sound like a very appetizing prey for anyone, or almost anyone. Cast form can adapt its cellular structure to atmospheric weathering. This Pokemon gained the ability to use the vast power of nature to protect its tiny body. However, there are very few of them left, so they must be protected. Kecleon, do I really have to explain it? With its ability, it becomes invisible to the eyes of potential predators, and it's also quite strong. Tropius is also one of the hardest to explain, to be honest. Poor stats, a rather useless main ability, which depends on the sun when most of the time it rains in tropical jungles, and what to say about the fruits that it grows, which make it even more appetizing to predators. But here's the theory. The route on which it originally appeared, Route 119, is full of Pokemon Rangers. So perhaps it's some kind of natural sanctuary for a Pokemon that is extremely beneficial to ecosystems. And people appreciate it a lot for its majestic appearance, but its features have caused it to be at risk of extinction. The fact that it also appears in other wildlife sanctuaries of the series, such as the Great Marsh in Sinnoh, or near the abundant shrine in Unova could reinforce this hypothesis that Pokemon Rangers protect them, so it hasn't needed to evolve. Absol has a strong intuition and sixth sense, which allows it to prevent disasters and warn people, but also to foresee attacks and dangers. Using these abilities, they often live for many years, even on their own. Relicanth has lived for 100 million years without any changes or adaptations in its body. This is because it feeds on microorganisms on the deep sea floor, where no Pokemon can withstand the pressure so it has no competitors. It was even considered extinct for a long time since the areas where it lives are hardly accessible to humans. Unless you are May or Brendan who go down there without even changing clothes. Love Disc are a 
symbol of love and romance. I would like to think that they've managed to survive thanks to infatuation, seeing how it works in battle over the last few generations, but they probably reproduce so fast that the species flourished despite their weakness. Pachirisu is very quick and its ability run away allows it to flee from any predator. It manages to survive by storing berries in nearby trees, although it's one of the Pikachu clones that would struggle the most to survive. Chadot mimics the sounds of its opponents to trick them into thinking it's one of them. This way they don't attack it. Spiritome is an ancient entity formed by 108 spirits, bounded to an odd keystone by a hero of the past so that it cannot release its true power. That seal is precisely what prevents its strength from getting out of control, so until someone releases it or it loses power, we will never see it change its form. Carnivine has adapted very well to its habitat, hanging like a vine and catching prey on the fly with its powerful jaw. It can also secrete a sweet-smelling drool that attracts prey. The Pokedex says it takes a whole day to eat them, which suggests that it doesn't have a high caloric burn, optimizing its survival even more. Rotom is a sneaky ghost, completely made of plasma. It has no predators and it doesn't need to hunt, feeding on electricity from appliances that it ends up breaking. If someone were to attack it for some reason, it could possess any device and turn very dangerous, just like a horror movie, so it's not recommended to take its mischief too seriously. Audino's sense of hearing is superb, allowing it to detect everything in its surroundings, including the feelings and physical conditions of close Pokemon. Besides that, its kind nature and its willingness to heal anyone who needs it is well known, which would make other Pokemon avoid attacking it. It lives quite well. Throw and Sock are powerful in their own right, among the greatest martial artists in the Pokemon world. The martial arts were created precisely to help the weak face the strong, so they could certainly defend themselves very well against even Pokemon considered stronger. Basculin is quite more interesting than it seems at first glance, even if originally its lack of evolution was one of the hardest to explain. Its design is bland, it has no particular defenses, and its power is nothing special in the hostile seas of the Pokemon world. Its line seemed to need something else, but recently we learned about the white-striped form, revealing key details of this species. Apparently, the hostile and aggressive nature of the red and blue-striped forms is what allows them to survive in such violent waters, while the gentle white striped form would perish in droves, summoning all those souls to the ghost of Basculegion. So it's implied that, despite not being strong, this temperament helps them to survive. Maractus lives in arid regions where ground-type Pokemon are the most abundant, and as one of the few grass-type Pokemon in such ecosystems, it has an obvious advantage. Moreover, the sound it produces, often mistaken for the noise of maracas, is very good at driving away bird Pokemon, which could be its main predator. This species is very comfortable in desert and steps, although it must be careful with the Darumaka that may wander around. Sigilyph is one of the weirdest and most mysterious Pokemon to date, so it's very hard to understand the reasons that may have caused them to remain without change for so many years. But it's said that they were the guardians of an ancient city and they always fly the same route while keeping watch for invaders. Perhaps being there for so long has made them develop a system that is ideal for that particular place, which could explain their unique battle style. Why would it need to evolve if it's already completely suited to its goal. Emolga is not especially powerful, but it has a great defensive type which gives it a natural resistance to many threats. It's a specialist in evasive tricks, a total headache for potential predators. Did you know that just as Chansey and Odino are the doctors of the Pokemon land, Alomomola is the doctor of the sea? As much as it sucks to deal with it in the games, in the Pokemon world its role is very similar, so the same explanations would be applicable. It gently holds injured and weak Pokemon in its fins, and it has a special membrane that heals their wounds. That would make many species roam around it, a whole group of healthy Pokemon that would protect it in a mutualistic bond. But if all else fails and Alamomola runs into an enemy on its own, it is very, very tough and sturdy, so when trying to devour it, its enemy enemy would be at greater risk of getting its fangs broken. Cryogonal may look goofy, but it's certainly at the top of the hierarchy in its habitat. At low temperatures, it's strong and not very appetizing from a nutritional standpoint, while at higher temperatures it turns into steam, vanishing until the cold weather returns and it materializes again. Why would it need to change such a perfect survival system? 
Stunfisk is also a flawless defense system shaped like a Pokemon. Due to its body structure, the only way to physically harm it is to step on it, but its skin is very hard, so it is unhurt even if stepped on by sumo wrestlers, and can counter with a jolt of electricity as an electric trap. It's also a ruthless hunter, hiding in the mud and catching countless prey by surprise. If for some reason an enemy puts it on the ropes, it's very easy for it to paralyze it and then flee by digging, sinking, or even flying. It's one of the most adapted Pokemon around, and its survival is assured for a long time to come. Drudigon doesn't need a lot of explaining to be honest. It's a dragon type Pokemon with a physical strength above even the average for its type, with a skin harder and tougher than rock. Going against it would be suicide for any wild Pokemon, although it does have a weak point. When its body temperature falls, it can no longer move. After all, it's a reptile. Despite its Achilles heel, it has been able to adapt. Stealing nests from other Pokemon and using them as a dwelling in which to survive the long winters in Unova. Bufalon is a Tauros with Afro power. Why would it need to evolve? And as if their brutal physical strength wasn't enough, their headbutts are one of the most devastating moves in existence, and their fluffy fur absorbs most of the damage it takes. They also live in quite large herds, so it is extremely reckless for wild Pokemon to even get close. Heatmore is not as strong, but they have conveniently been living with Durant for generations, and with an irresistible prey at their disposal, they haven't needed to get any more power. Powerful. But surprisingly, Duran also benefits from Heatmore. With their teamwork skills and far superior intelligence, they have developed a system for small groups of them to draw Heatmore's attention away from their colonies. Because the presence of Heatmore helps this species, as they are not very smart, so Durant can control them in some way, and they have the ability Flash Fire, which scares away other smarter fire type Pokemon that could find their colony and put the species in real trouble. There's a certain balance between them, so neither has needed to evolve. We we arrived in Kalos with Furfru. Apparently, there was an era when aristocrats were obsessed with this species, breeding them massively and competing to see who could trim their Furfru's fur into the most exquisite style. Even to this day, we see this Pokemon in various styles in the games, so presumably the tradition has been maintained, explaining why it has remained unchanged for so long. Halucha is small, but its great speed and proficient fighting skills enable it to keep up with big bruisers, like Machamp and Hariyama. I don't think there's much more to explain. It has perfect control of its position in the air, which gives it an advantage over heavier and more robust opponents. Dedenne is another interesting Pikachu clone. Its whiskers are little antennas. With these, they emit electrical waves to communicate with others of their species over vast distances. As a result, it have created a network with their own kind that serves to warn each other of potential dangers nearby. This way they can anticipate, flee, or even gather to face the threat. Carbink have lived underground for hundreds of millions of years, and of course, have not needed to change a single bit because in areas of such high temperatures and pressures, almost no Pokemon can survive, which eliminates all possible predators. Klefki is quite strange and mysterious. The Pokedex says that they threaten any attackers by fiercely jingling their keys at them, which doesn't seem like a very effective defense system to say the least, but perhaps those objects are capable of generating some kind of special effect or spell on their opponents when they're holding them. They are specialists in using status moves like no Pokemon in the world or a Corio don't need to evolve as they have a much more optimal way of adapting to their environment. Depending on the kind of nectar that they consume, their characteristics will adapt to the possible threats in the area. It's a much faster, efficient, and versatile 2.0 evolution, at least compared to regular Pokemon. What to say about Wishiwashi? I don't need to explain it. On its own, it is the most awfully adorable and weak Pokemon ever, but its specialty is to gang up in schools, making it a monster above even most legendaries. So what kind of sea idiot would mess with them for God's sake? Comfy has a very chill life picking flowers, but it happens to be much tougher than it seems, being among the strongest in the jungle. The fact that it goes completely unnoticed with the flowers decorating its body is a bonus, especially when it comes to hiding and launching surprise attacks in such flowery surroundings where it can blend in so well. Oranguru is one of the most evolved Pokemon in the real sense of the word. It's so smart that it only takes orders from very experienced trainers, preferring to spend its time in a contemplative life, and is often 
often seen having intense philosophical discussions with Slowking. Its signature move is Instruct, which makes the target Pokemon follow its orders, so it wouldn't be strange for it to be able to turn the tables, making any predator that goes after it end up persuaded and following its orders, forming even an army around itself. Good luck trying to match that. Passimian may not be as intellectual, but they are quite clever and pretty efficient at managing the natural resources of their environment. They are also extremely sociable, usually forming groups of roughly 20 individuals to play soccer. Their mutual bond is remarkable. They will never let down a comrade, and in battle, they protect and understand each other more than efficiently. Pukumuku is yet another one of the strangest Pokemon ever. It can eject its internal organs, which it uses to engulf its prey or battle enemies. Well, it's very strong and tough, so it can defend itself without any problem, even if it doesn't look like it. Like Carbink, Minior is a Pokemon adapted to the life conditions of a place where it has no competitors, in this case, the ozone layer. It appeared not many years ago from mutated nanoparticles, and it is expected to survive for a long time. Even if the surface of Earth were to become inhabitable, they could still be there. Kamala spends its whole life sleeping, apparently due to the sedative properties of the leaves that form its diet, which at least to me raises some doubts about its survival. But it seems that for some reason, its reflex responses and the unconscious reaction of its body while it sleeps are very effective in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Nobody understands how that's even possible, but it works, so it's all good. Be careful with Turtonator, because the shell on its back is chemically unstable and and explodes violently at the slightest contact. Add to that their innate power and few predators would want to get very close. Togedemaru has an automatic shield of spikes that protects it unconsciously. Although its ability to generate electricity is not very good, it can store it very efficiently throughout its life and release it suddenly upon threat, making it a very effective defense system. Without them, it would certainly be one of the most helpless Pokemon on the list, as it's quite weak. There is not much to question with Mimikyu. First of all, it's a ghost type, so it's already questionable whether you can take its life or something like that, but also every first hit it receives will be useless, giving it a chance to flee almost 100% of the time. There's also that legend that whoever sees its true appearance under its rag dies on the spot, which I honestly don't believe to be true, or it would be the most broken creature ever, but it probably does hide some kind of ghostly power that can make the opponent faint or be paralyzed. Bruxish imbues the terrain with psychokinesis that stuns its prey and puts them into a trance that it uses to attack mercilessly with its powerful teeth or to flee if it considers that the situation requires it as it might get into trouble. Drampa is compassionate and friendly with other Pokemon and people. However, it's well known how it turns into an unstoppable and destructive beast when someone angers it, destroying everything in its path. And it's not bluffing because it has the highest base special attack stat in the whole video, so you better not get on its bad side. Delmis is also a beast, statistically speaking. Its power may be due to the fact that it's actually the reincarnation of the seaweed adrift in the waves, one that has seen all its horrors and the shipwreck of countless warriors who were reborn in this ghostly being. Just look at its stats. What do you want it to evolve into, Eternatus? Cramorant is so strong that it can knock out some opponents in a single hit. It's not very smart, often forgetting even the Pokemon it's battling, but it seems that its strength has paid off for it so far. Phalanx are the opposite, physically weak, but they are brilliant at military strategy. Their discipline allows allows them to overcome any weaknesses they may have and be a formidable enemy, changing their formation as the battle requires one thing or another, like a mini army. So it's a Pokemon adapted to survive in extreme scenarios. Pincurchin is a sea Pokemon capable of storing electricity in each of its spines, which releases a brutal discharge on contact. Imagine how foolish someone would have to be to attack it under the sea, for God's sake. Stonjourner, like most Pokemon of its type, has trouble taking hits on the special side, but otherwise it's a formidable Pokemon. With unmatched strength and endurance, they are also quite fast for what you would expect, and they also have a talent for delivering dynamic kicks that, what can I say, I don't think anyone would want to be exposed to a hard kick by a stone column doing capoeira. Ice cube come from a frigid place, but are capable of producing icy air from inside their head to create a protective helmet against the heat of the environment. This great ability to adapt is an extra point on its part when it comes to survival, but its two known forms, Ice Face, in which it wears that helmet, 
it and noise face in which it melts, giving it excellent defense or speed, makes it even more versatile in battle. If threatened, it could force it to melt and flee at breakneck speed. Indeed, they are experts in emotions. They share information between them, warning of nearby threats much more efficiently than Deden, as they can sense any emotion in the area and respond accordingly at the slightest hint of hostility. Besides that, they can affect the emotions of others, so standing face to face with a predator, they might be able to change their mood or even become friends. Morpeko always carries electrically roasted seeds with it as if they're precious treasures. These, when consumed, have properties that have surely helped the species to survive, and that's why it's so protective of it and gets angry when someone tries to steal it. Perhaps that diet is what allows it to use a unique move that no one else has learned. Aura Wheel, a massive blow that would defeat most Pokemon, but also increases Morpeko's speed, allowing it to flee more effectively if the situation requires it. Galar Fossil Pokemon are the only ones we'll see in the video, as they are the only ones without an evolutionary line, along with Aerodactyl. However, they don't need to be explained as they are species that never really existed. Getting the parts wrongly combined gives rise to atrocious beings of great power, but with defects too obvious for them to survive. Squawkabilly are very social. They form flocks based on the color of their feathers, surviving through solidarity and cooperation with their fellow members. This, along with its hot-headed and vicious nature, manages to intimidate most potential attackers in their environment. Bombardier is quite strong, considering the hard materials it cracks with its beak and the heavy objects it carries in its apron, occasionally dropping those things from high places for fun. It builds its nests in urban areas where it may be a protected species due to the artistic and aesthetic interest in them. Cloth has powerful claws and a stony carapace to protect itself on the sheer cliffs where it lives, which it also climbs with great speed and dexterity if it needs to escape. And as if that were not enough, it camouflages itself very effectively in the environment. It's another Pokemon that does very well without evolving. Cyclozar, although it doesn't match its monstrous cousin from other eras, is also quite strong, but most importantly, one of the fastest Pokemon in all of Paldea. As a good lizard, it would be extremely sneaky for possible predators, being able to detach its tail with its signature move really fast, to lose weight and flee even faster, or maybe even please the attacker with that small treat. Orthworm maintains its metal body by consuming iron from the soil, which means that it has few competitors. Add to this its incredible talent for creating networks of tunnels to close the gap with the enemy or flee, and it becomes a tremendously tough prey. Flamigo also lives in flocks and has great synchronization with its group, being able to attack simultaneously in perfect harmony. If on its own it already has huge power, imagine how unwise it is to mess with a group of these Pokemon. Finally, Veluza has adapted to the point of being able to shed flesh of its own body parts. So if it feels threatened, it could once again satisfy or entertain its attackers. When it discards unnecessary flesh, its mind becomes honed and its psychic power increases and and it can also regenerate at an incredible speed to repeat the cycle. It's without a doubt one of the most bizarre Pokemon in the region to end the video. That has been a long journey, but I hope it was useful to appreciate a little more some really forgotten but quite interesting species. And to show that just because a Pokemon has no evolutionary line, it doesn't make it a filler Pokemon. On the contrary, we can find in them capabilities that are often more interesting and logical than we usually see. But that's all for today. Be nice, and I'll see you soon.